We've got two new EX jobs sneaking in with the second part of the banners for Final Fantasy X. So today we'll talk about whether or not you should EX Eileen or Ziza. Thanks as always to WarTheVisionsCalc.com. All right, so we need to talk about unlocking EX jobs again because this is so important. You can't waste your stuff. You only have so much of it. So to unlock the jobs, you have to spend a broadstone of the rarity of the unit you want to unlock. And these are limited. You can only get them from certain events or logins or shops. So don't just spend them willy-nilly. If As soon as you unlock one EX job, you might lock yourself out of other EX jobs. To actually level up the EX job, you're going to need a bunch of stuff here. All the red materials, those are easy to farm. Uh, those weapons weapon tablets, their drop rates aren't the best, but at least you can farm them reliably on Saturdays. And then the mine stones, we can get those from the barracks, from hard quests, uh, from a lot of different places right now, you know, from pulling dupes, whatever it is. Uh, and then also from all these select tickets that are available right now. So these right now are not that hard to get. So that's kind of nice. And then any EX job that we get in the uh, Mog shop from any sort of token, from Mog coins, from, uh, you know, your guild medals, your friend medals, those are going to be units that you might want to focus on especially if you're free to play the flowers down in the bottom there those are deceptive so you can only get a certain amount of those per month uh, from the drops and then otherwise we have to get them from wherever else like a, a shop a login bonus a banner some kind of you know paid package uh, so those are a limiting resource and those are kind of deceptive you have to spend them on uh, certain job levels for ex jobs but you also have to spend them on the final skill of an ex job so they those can run out and and again, if you're leveling two, let's say you've got your Liarte and then your UR EX job uh, and you spend some of these flowers on Liarte, you might just have uh, locked out your UR EX job from finishing. So please uh, count those up. Those are really important. Uh, and then finally, uh, you need these new Alchrists to unlock the skills on your EX board. And those uh, are really easy to farm on any day of the week, really, but uh, especially on the elemental day of the week. Uh, you also need a bunch of JP and, and Gil to do this. So you need, right now Gil's not a problem, but JP, don't forget we have the JP quest. You can unlock it whenever you want. Last time I checked, I had like 30 keys. I'd never used one. Uh, and then you just go in, uh, use your JP VC crystal, uh, use your friend's crystal if they have one, use all of your JP cards, use all of your um, JP crystal things that you equip to your units uh, at the beginning of the fight, whatever it is. And then you can farm some pretty insane uh, amounts of JP for these EX jobs. Just don't forget that that feature exists. We're gonna talk about Ziza first, and she's pretty interesting because her shards are available in the Mog Shop right now, and they're pretty easy to get, so definitely a strong candidate for a lot of people. She's also interesting because she's so useful in every game type. Uh, she might not be the best PvP unit around, uh, but she's very strong in live PvP. She's very strong in PvE, and she might even be pretty strong in auto PvP after this. So we'll have to take a look and make uh, that judgment for ourselves. So at level 99, she was an okay unit, but she really suffered from not having a lot of attack uh, and then not really having uh, skills to do to do a lot of damage. But she had high agility. Um, she had decent HP for given that she was like a you know like a quick damage dealer, but still not great HP and uh, nothing else really to talk about here. When she goes to 120, she gets 600 uh, HP. She gets a really big attack boost. Like that's a very significant attack boost. She gets some crit rate and then everything else that's nice. And she's still super fast. Her EX abilities are very cool as well. So Pummel, uh, the potency gets increased to 165 and it ga uh, grants a light killer. That's gonna be oh so important for taking out Yuna. It's also gonna be a two hit attack. So, you know, if you're going against people with barriers, that's gonna take two hits off their barrier, which is always welcome. And then at job level 22, she's going to get uh, her strike attack up skill will give 40 defense penetration at max level. That's a really huge amount of defense penetration to have innately. You don't have to use a buff. I'm using Elda 120 right now. And while he gets lots of defense penetration as well, it's only if he uses sharp spear plus. She's just always going to have it. That's huge. 
Uh, and then at job level 25, we get Rakshasha Fist, which is a new skill. It has uh, 26 AP cost, 200% mod, and then it decreases attack resistance by 30 for three turns to the target and it has three uses. This is a really good skill. You can also th see that it has a three space range and a range height of one. This skill is pretty crazy in my eyes, and I'll tell you why. So first of all, it's a huge mod. Normally when you see a debuff like this, it's a smaller mod and you just have to pay like, you know, the extra AP and do less damage so you can get this modifier or this, uh, this debuff. Uh, but it's going to reduce their attack resistance. And this is so cool because lots of people have elemental uh, resistance, uh, you know, uh, imperils, or they have st like certain uh, damage type imperils, like pierce imperil or something like that. This is just going to be attack resistance. So these are single target attacks and it's so much easier in a team uh, to have people of different elements and different attack types. And as long as they're using single target attacks, then they will be able to benefit from this uh, decrease. It's not just, you know, for her, she's not getting a penetration. She's decreasing something of the targets everybody can benefit from that and that makes this a really powerful skill next we'll take a look at a few comparisons to see how she stacks up so we do have two other strike units in the game we've got my boy raldor and then we've also got my girl winter venera and if we take a look at them and yes these are level 99 units uh, we can still see how they compare because ziza wasn't really close to them in terms of damage before her ex buff and you can see afterwards uh, that she is much stronger than them in terms of attack they all have defense penetration though, and Raldor and Venera still have a ton of really good striking attacks. Whereas Ziza does not quite have as many uh, cool effects. She can't give herself man killer like they can, uh, and she doesn't have this crazy scaling uh, demon purger modifier, but she has that new debuff, she has the new pummel upgrade, and we have so many light units in the meta. Uh, I think that she is gonna deal a lot of damage, and she's much faster than them. She still has the charm. Uh, she still has all of her cool uh, thief sub stuff. There's a lot going on here, and I, and I really wanna point that out. Now we can compare her to other EX jobs and we have to think about who we'd like to compare her to. So I'm going to choose Stern first because he is a dark EX and if you're trying to, you know, portion uh, who you're EXing and you think, well, maybe I won't go for two dark units, uh, then you should compare these two. So you can see Stern is stronger. He gets uh, slash and peril and he gets defense uh, penetration uh, and he is also very fast and um, and very very comparable overall. He's also going to get the um, self-sacrifice buff, so he is going to be a better attacker. He's going to be a pure attacker. Ziza's going to bring a lot more utility to your party, uh, and that's going to help way more on the live and the PvE side uh, compared to Stern. And we'll also take a look at Rob, because Rob is kind of more in that evade category, and uh, his damage is going to be a lot lower than Ziza's. So you can see that while Rob got a huge boost to kind of his uh, evade kit and that his luck is super high, you know, his agility is good, all that kind of stuff, uh, his attack is much lower than Ziza's. So uh, Ziza is kind of in between being um, a higher powered attacker like Stern and then pushing up towards like Titus and Elda and uh, an Oron. She's not quite there, but she's not lo on the lower end either of EX attacks. So she's definitely like a solid attacker. And the other thing to keep in mind is that, you know, right now these units are all really good because they're the only 120s. It's just like Yuna has the craziest magic ever because she's the only magic 120 unit. There's zero other 120 magic units. Every single other magic 120 unit pretty much uh, that comes out is going to be stronger than her. But she couldn't have been strong as them now because that would have been even crazy, like even more high. Uh, so she had to be kind of an appropriate level for the meta and then she's going to persist because uh, of all of the utility that she has and the skills. Next up is Eileen, and we're gonna take a, a look at her level 99 skills first. And we can see that she had huge levels of attack, like she's stronger than EX Rob uh, with attack value. And she has self-sacrifice because she has the soldier sub. So she was a huge attacker. Her HP wasn't incredible, uh, but she did have good decks and she had some crit rate. She has high, you know, potency skills that 49 agility was what crushed her. Like it's just inexcusable how low her agility was. So clearly when she goes to 120, she's gonna get more agility, right? 
Yeah, she did. So she went up to 55, so six more agility. Her uh, HP went up a whopping, uh, what is that, uh, like 1,200 or 1,300. So that's pretty significant, and I believe she does have Drain Force, so that's a pretty big deal. Uh, her attack went up even further, although it's not like a huge boost like some of the other units. She didn't need nearly as much of a correction. And then the rest of her stats went up too. So this is all looking very good, except her agility is still so low, and that is honestly crushing to me. But we'll take a look at her skills. Uh, at job level 19, she's going to get uh, upgrade to Shadow Stick. It's going to have a new AOE pattern, and it's going to have this big six-panel sweep. Uh, and then that that can Im uh, inflict immobilize on people, which is you know a good status effect, uh, and definitely good to have an AOE. Uh, but there's no defense penetration or anything there. Then at job level 22, Earth and Glory potency is upgraded to 200%. I'm gonna let you guys in on a secret. Earth and Glory is really, really good. I'm using Elda 120. He also has Earth and Glory, and I've been using it like crazy in live PvP because it has a two height difference. So it's this big uh, AOE on all sides of you, and it also hits up two squares up and down. So it can hit literally everybody around you, and hers is gonna be even stronger with her self sacrifice. She's gonna be able to like get into the middle of a bunch of units and then. Then just wipe them all in one shot, which is pretty impressive. And then at job level 25, she gets Impulse Thrust, which is a new skill. It costs 34 AP, has a 200% mod. It's piercing and has three uses. Now, something I want to mention here uh, is that this is basically like a Nighthawk, where she's going to like huck her spear or something like that, except this is piercing. So the way that that works is it hits everybody on the way to the target. So that means that if you hit uh, someone that is three spaces away from you, it's going to hit the people in the first two um, spots in front of that, uh, but it's not going to hit the two after that. So it's not like, you know, your line AOE that's going to hit everything in a line. It's only going to hit people on the way to the target plus the target. So that's still really good. Um, this is a really, really strong longer range Nighthawk. I think that's insane. Uh, with Elda, I like to use Nighthawk, but it's not his strongest skill, and it sucks because you want him to use that as he's closing down people. This is going to be a long range one shot, and it's actually pretty long range uh, considering that she's a melee unit. So I really, really like this one or this level 25 skill. Unfortunately, I'm still really down on the fact that she did not get enough agility uh, and that she didn't get any defense or pierce penetration and that's going to be kind of tricky for me. She does get an HP 200 stat node uh, as well as a uh, more attack at uh, job level 25. So I think if you are going to uh, go for her, you'd want to go to job level 25. But I think if you're going to go for her, it's going to be a labor of love. We'll also do some comparisons for Eileen, of course. And the first one is going to be Elda, my boy Elda. Uh, and he... He got a little bit better uh, support than she did because he does have uh, just super high attack. It's still one of the highest attack values in JP. But most importantly, he got defense penetration and he got pierce resist penetration. So even though she has a better level 25 skill than Elda does, Elda has all of that utility to bust through tanks. Elda also has, uh, he also got some agility. He got four agility from his EX job and that puts him up to 60, which is more serviceable than 55, that's for sure. And then the other person we're gonna compare her to is Oron because I think he's gonna be our standard for uh, very strong attackers. Oron gets self-sacrifice just like a lot of people and he can boost even higher than Eileen can. Uh, but Oron also gets a pretty silly amount of defense penetration, he gets barely you're breaking, uh, he gets 100% hit attacks, he gets all the things that you need to take a wide array of parties. His range is less than Eileen, but I think he's just a better investment overall uh, compared to her. So it's really unfortunate for Eileen that she got kind of shafted in a couple departments, uh, but she does have cool, like objectively, her skills are all good upgrades. Um, Particularly the Earth and Glory and the um, that new skill, those are really good. Like I, I really, man, I wish I could have both of those on Elda, uh, but uh, overall, I think she kind of got shafted with her EX. 
So the question is, should you EX? And I'm gonna say, uh, for Aziza, she's a big maybe. And the reason she has to be a maybe is because the EX materials are so limited. So if you're planning on EXing any of your other units, you're gonna have to look ahead at when they're coming and see if you can even afford to EX her. But I think most of us can because we can get her shards for free. So even if you don't wanna EX her now, you should definitely just collect her shards with the Mog Metals or with the, whatever they are they cost in the mog shop, uh, and then just get ready so you could EX her whenever you want. I, I think she's worthy as an EX, um, no matter what, because she's going to be really good in live PvP, and she's going to be really good in PvE, and I actually think she's going to be good in auto PvP, but even if she falls off in auto PvP, that doesn't matter, because she's still always going to be useful for those other two game modes. People still use her at 99, so if she's at 120, she's going to be even better for you uh, with all the added utility. Uh, imagine her using her new punch on someone, and then somebody else can come in and, and definitely kill them. Uh, as long as that Yuna doesn't proc their freaking counter heal. But I digress, let's move on to Eileen. She's a no from me. Uh, the low agility and the no defense penetration just means that I just, I don't think she's gonna keep up with us and she's gonna be uh, for people that enjoy her only. So uh, I think these units might be easier for new accounts to work on, especially Ziza. Uh, so I think that there's a there's a reason to work on them, but for the most part, I think most people should be steering away uh, from Eileen. She's very risky. Sorry, Oran J. Ziza, on the other hand, definitely good to go. I think she's going to be really cool. At the very least, you could build up their shards and then uh, save up the mats and then wait until you can portion uh, those flowers and those broadstones to them. Okay, so we're going to talk about the units that are coming up next really quickly. So the next wave of EX jobs should be, and they won't come out for maybe a week or two, uh, is going to be uh, Medina, then Sir O, and Phoebe. Now, Zazen was supposed to come out this wave, and he didn't. So I don't know where he is, uh, what's going on with him. Maybe he'll come out the next wave, maybe he won't. And then after that, we're going to get the Gilgamesh uh, EX. He came out with King Mont in uh, the JP server, so that's still quite a ways away. That's after Nier, so we might not see Gilgamesh for a while. But if we do follow the exact order of JP, which we've already not because Zazen's not out, then you uh, this is the order that you're going to see them released in. All right, that's going to be all for today. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope that it was useful to you. You can let me know if it was in the comments below, and also let me know what you think about these two units, if you think Ziza and Eileen are worth EXing, or if they're both going to be big skips for you. All right, until next time.